this is Ginger Cook, and you are watching this because John and I are on vacation, and we like to put up a video even when we're out of town. And this actually is a scene from one of the vacations we've taken previously in one of the islands in the Caribbean, and I've added a few more flowers and so forth. And this is what I would call, a, um, this is impressionistic, but it has almost a watercolor style to it. And it's very few brush strokes to get what you want to have happen. I mean, it's very simple. It's not overpainted. It's, it's an interesting way to paint something. And we're just going to talk about that for a minute. It's an 8 by 10 canvas. We're going to color our whole canvas sort of this a beige color. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to make that color, even though you can buy it. This is called unbleached titanium. Maybe you see buff titanium. You can cover the canvas in that color. I'm going to show you also how to make that color. But it's just sometimes it's convenient to just be able to do that. We take a little 8x10 canvas, all right? And the first thing we're going to do is just take a fairly large brush like this. And I'm going to show you, this is our, un I've tanned the canvas. Now this is my unbleached uh, titanium, okay? Now if I wanted to make that color, take a little bit of yellow oxide and white, tiny bit of purple, okay? tiny bit of purple, and I want you to see how close I got to it, see? I mean, maybe that was too much purple, but basically like 1% purple. Yellow oxide, 1% purple. Look at that. I've got that color. So you don't have to, um, you don't have to buy it. Aren't you kind of impressed? That's how fast we made that color, and look, it just, you just need this sort of light color. Now watch how I'm painting it, coming down and across, and down and across, and down and across, and just making an interesting um, background color without putting any grooves in the record, so to speak. Uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't want, don't want to go all the way back and forth because later that's going to show up. Okay, so here's some of our color up here like that, and it just takes takes a minute. I just I want you to see I'm scooping up a bunch of paint and spreading it, and then what we're going to do is dry this extremely well, and then I'll show you. We'll just draw on the house. It's this little shack that was there. And in fact, it was a restaurant where we ate in um, Honduras. This is actually in Honduras, little little restaurant in Honduras. Okay, so here we go. We've got all this painted in. And now this is where you paint your sides. If you're going to do any side painting when you have anything left, this is what you do with it. Just come around here on the bottom edge here. Just catch it. Just takes a second to do it. Don't do it first. Because then, because you're going to have a lot of paint on your brush too that you can just uh, kind of use. We talk about this. I don't always do it, but sometimes it it doesn't hurt to just um, to just do that and hold that up in the air here like that. There we go. All right. So I'm going to put that down on the uh, canvas. I'm going to put a little piece of paper underneath it so that there, because I've got paint on everything. There we go. Let's, a little bit of piece of paper up there. There we go. It's a little one of these palette papers. All right. So, all done. Now we're just going to dry it. This will be fun. And we'll tell some stories today. I know you miss this when John and I start kidding around. Everybody says, well, I just like it when no one talks. But I know a bunch of you like the story, so I'll try to remember to tell you a fun story today while we're painting this. I think I can do that. Just some, some little family history or gossip. That's always entertaining. So let's pause and dry. Okay, so here's our background. All right, now we're going to come over about um, uh, five and a half inches from the bottom and do a marker. I'm just going to show. You. We're just going to gr just paint this, draw this in really simply. Let me show you how to do it. Five and a half inches, make a mark. So that would be down here, five and a half. Make a mark like that, and I want you to come straight up about um, two and a half inches and make a mark. Okay, two and a half inches and make a mark right like that, about straight up. Okay. Now, our, from there, I want you to go put my glasses on so I can see. Just about three inches up from there and make a mark and then just draw a little straight line down here like that, okay? Now, I want you to come down um, an inch and a half from the top. Let's see, let's come over. Yeah, let's come over an inch and a half. All right, and then down an inch and a half from the top here. See what I'm doing here? Zoom in. Do, 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 do. Zooming in. 
now down an inch and a half like that and then just draw a little line like this don't have to use a ruler just gently draw a little line like this and then bring it down about um, two inches down here on the side and then just fold it off like that then just come above it a little bit and just make a little bit of a roof you're not going to see too much of it it's going to be covered but that's our little roof all right now okay so there that's what we've got so far all right now I want to come in about let's see in about uh, the width of the ruler which is about an inch and then come down here like this and just what I want you to do is just sort of trace around the ruler okay make a door like that okay here's your little door it doesn't quite come all the way up to the top here so that's about the width of the ruler or about an inch see now from there I want you to come up like this and just make a little come up about a quarter about an, uh, let's see how far is this about an inch and then come this way we'll just bring that off the off the canvas like that all right see what we've got we brought that off the canvas and then here you're just going to sketch in another little window right here um, kind of just underneath this peak doesn't have to be too wide it's coming right down here to the railing okay okay we'll have our lantern here and we've got sort of a nice big post here you don't really see it but we've got a nice post here right here like that there's a nice big post out a little bit from this okay and then we're going to just make a little line down like this but you're not going to see it because um, this is all going to be flowers but here here this is going this direction about an inch down kind of about an inch straight up and down something like this now what happens is we've got a porch that's straight across here like this in front of our um, door and I want to come down another quarter of an inch like this let's stop and then do something here at an angle right like this and this is where our stairs are going to be okay let's come across see we've got this is going to be the top of the porch we'll shorten this door up just a hair okay and then um, this will be a step right here and here's a step down here at the bottom like this there we go it's very simple okay and this is all going to be flowers well I guess you can do this if you want this is all going to be flowers like that so this is our um, this is basically all there is to our little house I mean it's really simple all right so let's now we've got the usual culprits for for paint we've got the yellow oxide cad yellow medium dosing purple let me just zoom back out so you can see that okay dosing purple ultramarine blue phthalo blue burnt umber magenta cad red medium white and we may or may not use the zinc white so let's let's start with a little angle brush I think I want to find a small little angle brush and let's just paint in our house. So we're going to take some burnt umber, a little tiny bit of cad red medium, make kind of a reddish brown color, and come under here like this, and just gently paint in the house. And just we're going to try to do this as economically as possible. In other words, it's not a lot of detail in this. The detail is sort of in the the fact that it's oh, there's a lot of flowers and stuff, but it's very simple. We're trying to keep it very simple. Kind of dark under the rafters here, a little darker maybe a little more ultramarine blue under here like that okay and then a little bit more cad red medium as we come down this way make this more of a um, reddish brown color also you could use burnt sienna here too that would be another color for instance if you took a little yellow and red and made an orange color and then added a little bit of the brown to it you could have that too if you want this a little bit brighter more of a mahogany color you do that now this is on the other side of the window and it's all coming out like this there I mean it's just amazing how uh, simple this is once you draw it in I think you're gonna find this fun to do and easy you should play some tropical music if I would love to be able to play some tropical music but you know that YouTube is very funny about it even when you license it it's a trick so we're not going to do it but now here's a little ultramarine blue I want to darken this up under here like that now where my um, 
posts are. I just think I'm going to do something like this. Kind of indicate where my little posts are. And here's the top of this. I don't think that was dry enough right there. I think what happened here is my canvas wasn't as dry as I want it. So let's take a little more red here. There we go. Okay. Here's the top of the window. Okay, like that. So this is all we're painting in like this. Pretty simple, yeah? Now, okay, so as long as we're starting, you don't get confused. Let's take a little bit of yellow oxide and add to that color. And let's come under the porch here a little bit and sort of make our porch like that. Let's make that a little lot, lot more tan. And um, I'm going to take a little purple and burn uh, let's see, I just want a little bit square this door up a little bit, maybe a little bit darker on this side of the door. And uh, how about let's make some purple and ultramarine blue and put that inside the door like this. And if you can, just leave a little bit uh, for your um, your edge, you know. But if you don't, that's okay too. I'll just show you how to fix that in a minute. This is a really fun trick. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so we're going to say that's that, and this is it. A little bit of purple, ultramarine blue in the windows. Okay, like that. There we go. I want a little bit of a dark under here like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's easy. All right, so far you're going, wow, this doesn't seem to be a lot to this. And it isn't. It's really very simple. Now, let's take a little bit of purple and burn umber and say this, uh, this side of our house is dark, even though you're not going to see it. We're going to have um, plants all over it, but we're just, I'm just going to go ahead and fill it in anyway like this. And then I think I need the, I have some dark under my steps. So here's a little bit of dark right here, some dark under the step here, like that. Keep these kind of straight across, you know, parallel to the top and bottom of your canvas. And here's some dark under the step here. Okay, and a little bit of dark under the door, like that. Well, there you go. So far, so good, yeah? So this is what we got so far. Now take some white paint, and uh, maybe even some beige color paint, and then add a little bit of cad yellow, uh, yellow um, oxide with it, okay, like that. Just see me mixing that up there, and I've got this sort of beige color, and I'm going to say that's the top of the roof line of the house up here like this before we put the flowers. I'm going to say that's that this color. Okay, like that. Just pull that down like this. And then I want a, um, a little more yellow oxide on this and I want this to be sort of a post here. It's coming here next to the house. And I'm going to use that same color to um, do my um, steps and a little bit more now I want a little bit grayer so what can I do here for the steps let's put a little more white with that come across here like this and say here's my steps and make sure you're pinching your brush if you're using one of these angle brushes pin some once in a while this is going to have a little bit of a purple feel to it because this purple's still wet and it's picking up some okay so those are my two steps okay so far so good and maybe a little yellow oxide here on the inside here like that. There we go. Okay. All right. So there we go. Let's see. A little bit white. Let's take a little bit of white now and come on the top of this. Kind of lighten up these rails just a bit. A little bit of white. That's all still wet. So I'm going to put just a few little um, streaks in my post here. Okay. Come up here like this. Come across here with my railing. Okay. All right. So you can see that's that's what we've painted in so far, and I think it looks very nice. Now, one of the things I did up here, which I really like, is I made this a little more yellow up here on the top. So I'm going to take some cad yellow medium and some of our buff, a little bit of white. Okay. And I want this up here on the top. I want the sky a bit more yellow. And uh, that's the yellow oxide rather, not the cad red medium, yellow oxide. 
and uh, I want this a little bit more yellow up here to indicate heat. I want to say that this is a hot place and that it's summer, you know, and um, so we want this sort of a little bit lighter yellow up here on the top. It's going to show up on our background now. Just going to fog out this line here like that, okay. And I mean that's pretty much all we have to do till we dry it, okay. Now we have to pause and dry it. And I want to show you why I did this. I'm going to grab a painting that we have on our gallery site, gingercooklive.gallery. I'm going to show you why we did that. Painted this yellow up here, and um, to indicate maybe that the, that it's a hot climate. All right. So let's just dry this, and I'm going to pause and dry. I'm going to grab that other painting and show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Now the reason I wanted this background, this light yellow color, was again to show heat. To show this was a tropical day. People always think you have to do a blue sky. Here's a painting we have on our website, gingercooklive.gallery. This is one of our weekly lessons. And this was originally done by an artist in, in Ecuador in, um, like the mid 1800s. And it's fantastic, isn't it? Don't you just love this? And again, I love how all the heat was fed. The title of it is called Ecuador. Remember, if you ever want to catch just a couple of our videos on our website and you don't have time to be a monthly member, even though that's a great deal, $9.95 for a week and you can just pick out, out of the 295 videos we've got, you can just pick out something and paint it or, you know, pick out, you know, 10, doesn't matter, whatever you can do in a week. And then here's an example of the same technique done in our Wave and Water Master Class. You see, we wanted to suggest that it was tropical and hot. And again, the background is this light yellow. Wave and Water Masterclass talks not just about oceans, but waterfalls and all kinds of stuff like that. So um, those were the two paintings I wanted to show you. And this is drying now. What we can do is take a piece of, oh, this is an inch wide tape. And I'm going to just hold it like this, kind of line it up straight over my dried piece like this. I think that's, let's see, is that going to be maybe too wide? Let me just see. I think we'll try quarter inch. Because I think the inch is too wide. And I'm going to just show you a little trick with tape when you're trying to get something straight. So I'm going to put this one here like this. And uh, let's see, do I have a palette knife handy? I can cut that with. Let's see, I brought a palette knife over. Yeah. Okay, these are great for that. So I'm going to cut it right about. Well, I'll wait and cut them both. Okay, so I'm using quarter inch wide tape, making sure that it's straight up and down. Just going to kind of overlap like this. Now, I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to just cut it right here, okay, right about here. Hold that down and cut it right here, okay? Let's say that that's my, that's my door. Now, then I'll take the tape and tape around the door, making sure that these are straight up and down, okay, like that. That's straight with the bottom of the canvas. Okay, I'm going to say this is my little, this is my door here. I think I've got that pretty straight. Furnish that down. This is, you know, you don't have to do this. You can just freehand this in. I'm going to take a little bit of phthalo blue and white and a little tiny bit of yellow in it, just a touch to make it more of a tropical color. Now let's age it a bit by adding a bit of burnt umber, just a touch of burnt umber. Let's age this door. I'm going to come around here like this. Just paint right over the tape. See, like that. Okay. And then at the top of the door, I'm going to have it a little bit darker. So here's a little bit of phthalo blue and um, uh, raw umber, and our burn umber, and a little bit of white. Okay. But I want it a little bit darker at the top of the door. I'm going to say that this part here is darker. Of course you could make this door any color. Okay. Now let's darken this up just here, adding a little purple to that. Let's just say I want it a little bit darker up here like this. Okay, maybe something down here at the bottom too. Here we go. It's nice to have more than one color in the door then if you want to if you want to make it aged even more. Now look I'm just going to take a little bit of the 
of the beige color that we did our background with, barely touch it, hold this flat, okay, like that, something like that. Now I've got an interesting door. Let's uh, let's just peel off and see what we got. That's pretty good, right? No. The same thing to get this part off. No. Get this part off. We're just going to do that. Just peel this up like that. Okay, now my ta my paint was not dry enough. Oh, actually, I kind of like that. It looks like a broken screen door. That's cool. The paint wasn't dry enough, so that's why it did that. But man, I like that. Well, that was what we'd call a happy accent. I don't know if you could reproduce that if you tried, but, you know, we'd like it. So we're going to say that, um, wow, that is cool. That is really cool. All right, let's go back to our brown color. Come underneath the door like this and kind of touch up, touch up around our door here like that. We'll just touch it up here. Could have touched it up there too, but I kind of like the screen door hole in it. Um, that is neat. I'll, I don't know if I'll leave it or not, but I'm looking at that now thinking that that's kind of cool. So, all right, so we've got a little bit of, let's, we can, you know, now do you have to tape the other, you know, this one in? No, you can, you could just very gently paint in your um, window. Put a little water on your palette somewhere, just a tiny little puddle. So you can have just a bit of water in the tips of your brush, just a tiny bit. And just come on up here. I'm just going to make that sort of purple with a little bit of phthalo blue in it, too. There we go. I'll just I, I didn't do this other in the, in the original picture. I didn't do this one blue, but I think I want it blue, too. And then I'm just going to come straight down here like this, very gently, with a straight line. Put some cross pieces in the window like that. So again, you can freehand this in or not, depending on what you want to do. And I think I want some darker color on this. A couple places. There we go. All right, like that. And we'll we'll see about this door because what's going to happen is I'm going to if I put the mullions down like this with the kind of light purple and white, a little bit of ultramarine blue maybe in it. Okay. If I go ahead and put the centerpiece down, remember I'm using an angle brush, long end facing away from me. Put a dot here and here in the middle. I just come straight down here with that centerpiece on the door. Pinch the brush. Okay, and I want some little tiny ones going across. It's interesting. Do I like? I mean, I can just see that. It doesn't show up as much. I might have to do a little dark purple underneath for for some um, contrast. There you go. But there's my kind of screen door, which I kind of like, but again, you may not like it, which is, you know, then do something else. You know, just go ahead and color it in. And it only happened because I didn't have this dry enough when I was taping it. Okay, here's the top of this. Um, um, Uh, porch here a little bit, just a little bit of a light line here, a little bit of a light line here on this edge of the step, like that. Okay, so there, this is what we've got so far on here. I think I'm going to put a little bit of dark next to this one here, like that. It isn't in the original picture, but I put a little bit of a dark here, maybe even some more detail on this post. There we go. Okay. All right. So now what you do, and I think you saw where we came under the railing here with some dark, and then almost like a upside down L here. Okay. Like that. So we darken that. All right. So now the, t the rest of the th t things we can do now is just dry this and put in the palm trees and stuff. And here's where we are. See? So we've got the house done. And, um, we could do the we could do the the, um, the lantern. So I thought I'd tell you some stories here. Everybody kind of likes the stories, so I can tell you that. And this is the part where, if you don't like chatter, just turn the sound off. You can see I'm just going to paint this little lantern in here anyway. So all right, there's my little lantern, little rectangle like that. Okay, there's my lantern, and I'm going to I well I don't have to dry because this is well this is pretty dry. Let's see. 
put a little light right here like that right where the this might be catching the light from the lantern both sides okay now what all right so let's see um, trying to think of some something fun to, to share with you that um, has to do with travel and, and tropical stuff. Oh, I can tell you this. When I was, um, oh, about, um, I think I was in the fourth grade, my uh, my parents decided to go to Hawaii. Now, my adopted mother was an artist, and a really good, quite a good artist, and she was, you know, that was one of, that was her thing, was uh, painting, and um, so we were we we had never been, you know we lived in Seattle in those days there was no jets you this is how long ago this was you flew on um a uh, you know a prop plane from Seattle that still took us like eight hours to get there I mean it was a long time to get there you really had to want to go there that's all I can say is that I promise you you really had to want to go and I'll just give a little bit of a dark there like that there we go you really had to want to go to um. To Hawaii because I mean it was a long it was a long flight and as a kid it was really um, what can I say it was a challenge to just be in the airplane that long but we got there and we were staying in Honolulu at the, at the Hawaiian village which was a new hotel in those days and very pretty in fact I actually went later stayed there later with uh, Cinnamon's dad on my honeymoon came back years later you know what was that I was probably 10 so eight years later I guess you know not that long uh, both married to Cinnamon's dad. I married him at the age. I just turned 18. Um, so, okay, so I'm going to be mixing some dark uh, green now while we're talking. So anyway, my mom was an artist, and um, she got it in her head that she wanted to find these Japanese lanterns. You start with a real dark green. Thalo blue, yellow, a little ultramarine blue. Really a dark green here. Okay, and I'm going to add more yellow to it. A little yellow oxide to this. So, uh, you know, we were from Seattle. Seattle is like England. It does, it rains, but there's not, there's not enough sun to get sunburned. I mean, I don't remember ever, ever getting sunburned in my life there. Okay. So I'm going to say I've got a palm tree coming up this way. So it's going to come next to the house like this, coming up here like that. There's my palm tree. All right. So the first le level. So anyway, Mom wanted to find these Japanese lanterns that looked like little dolls, so she could put them in her painting. So she drug us around all over downtown Honolulu. We None of us had any suntan lotion. I, I don't think there was such a thing as sunscreen. I was in shorts. It didn't occur to anybody. And see, I want an angle brush for this. It didn't occur to anybody that um, um, you'd get sunburned. But... Um, my sister and I, and there, I don't know what the, she was wearing, but we, she didn't get sunburned, but my sister and I, this is an angle brush like this, we're going to come like that. Okay, see how I'm weaving this, um, you know, the, 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 this, this tree here like that, there you go, like that, right? And I'm going to put another one going this way. Make it a little darker. So when we got back to the hotel, I was so sunburned. My, I mean, we're talking about blisters on the back of my legs. It was a thing. And then it turned out that um, she found the same ones, this, these ones. We never found the lanterns, by the way. We never found them. We went, wandered all over Chinatown, all over downtown Honolulu. We went to every kind of curio shop and junk shop. And, oh, my goodness, they had some stores in those days. There were a lot of sailors. So, there were some, oh, what we did find, my sister and I did get our first radios, first portable radios. They had come from Japan. And then we had got our first portable radios ever. I just, I know that sounds funny, but that was a big deal. Nobody had them where I lived. None of my friends had anything like that. I'm going to come back up here like this with this angle brush and bring another palm around over like this and it's kind of break it up. So I, but that was the experience, was the, being sunburned and that was it was a real shock and it, there really wasn't anything they could do for you except say sorry sorry that happened okay so we're going to say you've got another one coming right here kind of off this roof and I'm going to put a little more white with that 
make that a little lighter blue, kind of a blue-green color. There we go, like this. Bring it down over the roof just a touch. Here's the dark part of it. Okay, and let's bring another one right here. Okay, some more green, making these green colors. There we go, bring it this way. So the other thing that was really kind of nice that happened on that trip, what I remember most about that trip, it was fun. We, my sister and I, you know, they, they taught us the hula dance, and I think they're still teaching the same one. And, and um, you know, we really did. It was one of my favorite vacations, and it was it was so exotic, and I really fell in love with Hawaii. And um, and, and I have been back several times, uh, you know, as an adult. And um, now right over this is why I wasn't so concerned about this window here, because we're going to go right over the window with one. Make it a little lighter. I'll just say that there's this palm frond that's coming over the window like this. Okay, and then we're going to make that one in front a little more white here. So my dad, my dad was a sweetheart. My adopted father was the nicest person. He really was. I always talk about my mother, but my adopted father was really a lovely man. He came from a family of, there was, um, I don't know, maybe 12 kids in his family. There was a lot of kids in his family. And, uh, you know, he was the, he lied about his age to get it, you know, was one of the first people into World War One. you know, was one of the, because he didn't want to be a minor in Michigan. And his brother had, his, his brother had started working in the mines at 13 and didn't like it, had killed himself when my father decided he was never going to work in the mines in Michigan, so he, you know, lied about his age. Anything was better than that to get away. So he ended up in World War I. Let's see, I think I'm out of yellow oxide here. And, uh, you know, in the trenches, I've got gastro, I mean, just came so close to dying in World War I, then it's interesting to me that he saw that as preferable. Because they're just, you know, they were, they were a family of Welsh immigrants. There wasn't a lot of, um, uh, opportunities, you know, for him then, and that he, I think that he could reasonably see. I'll take a little bit of cadmium, medium, and orange. But anyway, he was a, he became a superior court judge. He was one of the judges on the Nuremberg trials in Germany later on in his life. I mean, he was a marvelous person and really kind and he was just kind and just nice. And so what he did as a kid for me, which was just so cool, was, um, he, um, uh, let's see, I think I'm going to bring this railing down a little bit. This. There we go. Okay, so now we've got our palm tree. See that? Um, if you're wondering what I'm using, I'm using a, a half inch an angle brush, ruby satin silver angles. And these are wonderful. They're absolutely wonderful. You can make the best trees. I'm going to come down here and start making some, a um, little bit of purple with that, make some dark, some sort of dark palm like this. Let's see, just bring it down like that, just come over this way. I want a little bit of water on my stuff. So anyway, when we were in Hawaii, he went to the gift shop and got a bunch of seashells and then I put them in his pocket and then what he did was he he and I would go beach combing. Nobody else wanted to get up. I was a kid that was out of bed in the morning. Everybody else, my sister included, they were all people that slept in. My mother, everybody. Just, I mean, we were in Hawaii. The day was young, and every, we were all stuck waiting for these people to get up. Very annoying to me. I'm still kind of a morning person. It's different. John's a late night person. He doesn't go to bed till like midnight. And I want to be up early. It's interesting. When we travel, though, we get up a little more, a little earlier. Okay. I'm going to bring this down like that. See how we're doing that? This is very simple. Don't get too carried away with this, okay? Now, we're going to say that there's some sort of um, dark stuff that's coming off of the, here, too. Let's just say we've got a little bit more yellow in this, a little bit lighter. I'm going to say we've got some sort of plant that's growing around here like this, back in here behind the house. We don't know what it is. And now I'm going to take the back of my brush and just make up a plant up here 
like this and just say that there's something up here, put a little white with it. Don't want a little tiny bit of cad red, medium, little gray red. Don't want it too bright because it's in the back. So anyway, I thought I had found all these seashells and he'd been planting them in, <laughs> he'd been planting them in front of me. So then when Cinnamon was a little kid, we went to Florida and, uh, you know, when she was about three in our motor home and, um, so I did the same thing to her. I went and bought some beautiful clown shells and stuff, and I just planted them on the beach. And she actually believed that we had found all of those. But it, I just, it was such a delightful experience. I remembered that so much from my childhood that that was so sweet. You know, here's a little bit lighter things here like that. Here's our house. I've already got some bougainvillea coming down here, right? I mean, this is kind of cool, isn't it? I mean, actually kind of, don't you think that's kind of neat? So we're still in the greens, right? So bear with me. So now we're going to keep making these dark greens, purple, ultramarine blue, thalo blue, green. This is ultramarine blue, red shade, thalo blue, green shade. That's what I always use. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of purple. And we're going to say that down next to here, using just the corner of this, we're going to say that we've got some dark green coming around our edge here. And then just, uh, you know, maybe some something coming like this. Just keep this loose. This is a very loose painting, all right? That's, I can't, can't stress that enough, loose. What we mean by loose is just a few brush strokes. Don't overwork it. We're going to just say that there's something growing here on the side, and we're not talking about it too much, okay? Now, over here in the background, and usually the second time I can even make these better because I know exactly what I want to do. I'm going to just say that kind of back in here, there's some sort of, this is now the ground, keep this level, because we're saying this is ground plants right here. Like this is a path of some kind, okay? And then I'm going to come this way with the dark green, like that. And say that this is where our, kind of, we're closing off the picture here, see that? So anyway, that, so Cinnamon just, um, I remember her showing her, conch shells at school and, and showing everybody what she had found at, on the beach. And, but I mean, she was just, it was a great game and, you know, it was fun to do and, it, you know, something my dad started. So if you ever tried that with little kids, it's sort of neat. So the other thing that's really fun to do is to go to the beach with a metal detector. We didn't have them then in those days, but that is really fun with kids and you can find all kinds of stuff. Um, years ago, you know, some years ago I was in Hawaii on a, on a business comp, comp convention with uh, my second husband, uh, George, and uh, uh, George had this metal detector I'd given him for Christmas, and he didn't play golf uh, like the other uh, people did, and so he, he was missing out on being able to get the meetings he needed. Um, really, he needed some meetings with some of these people, and he was, just wasn't getting it because he wasn't socializing with with the people that were coming to this business convention during the day because um um let's see i think i'll just make this a little darker under here like that maybe saying something's growing all right i'm going to dry this anyway so he had this metal detector and he got i mean you may have heard the story he got the moms to uh well he's he he saw that there, were, there was a lot of moms and they didn't play golf either with the kids they were stuck on the beach with the kids all day so he was out there just playing with this metal detector, and the kids wanted to know what he was doing. And he said, you know who's staying at this hotel? And he's, George has always been good with kids. He said, uh, there's all these rich people, and they, they drop money and valuable things, and we're going to find them. Oh, cool. You know, kids are going, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so um, anyway, um, it's a little bit dark green here. So they were off. Then they were off on the beach. Uh, looking for uh, valuable things with the metal detector. And then pretty soon the moms were salting the beach with money ahead of George so the kids could find all this money. And then when it came time to, at dinner time, when it came time to meet with all these people, the mom says, oh, you've got to meet George. He's so lovely. He was playing with the kids all day. He's just great. So to the chagrin of a lot of people, I think, George had these meetings that, um, bring this down here like that, some of the other people were not privy to because he had been nice to the wives. It was not a bad idea, you know, get, you know, and nice to the kids. And anyway, uh, metal detectors are fun. And, you know, now they can tell, tell the difference between a, a, coke can, a you know, coke top and a dime and a diamond ring. I mean, it's great. 
So, all right, so I need a little bit more. I'm still in my greens. I'm going to lighten up this green right here a little bit above the house. Just adding a little more white to the green we already have been making, right? Just lighten that up just a hair. And then, remember, your acrylics have a tendency to dry darker, so I want to make sure I have a few little light spots on um, here like that with my um, palm trees. Okay. There we go. And of course, we've got some bougainvilleas over here. But now, here's the deal, you guys, and this is important. Um, red is opposite green on the color wheel. So if you try to do red flowers over wet green, this is why your flowers don't come out. You have to make sure your green is really, really dry. I mean, I can't, I cannot emphasize this enough. You've got to make sure the green is really, really dry. Okay. Add a few more little somethings here like that. All right, now let's see. Let's just stop here. It's already looking nice. Let's just stop here and dry it. Okay, so you can see in this one that I have some shadows from the palm trees coming in front, and I've made a wash of water, purple, a tiny bit of magenta, and a little bit of yellow. And I want to just come out this way, like this, almost like a watercolor effect. And I want to indicate that there might be some shadows out here, like this, from these. Uh, and I'm bringing it all the way off. Maybe a little tiny bit of ultramarine blue with that. Now I'm going to change the color of this. You don't want it too dark, like that. I'm just going to bring it out. You're just going to suggest that there might be some um, shadows here, maybe something like that. That's under here like this. Just one, two, three, and stop. You don't have to get too carried away like that. Just If you get too much, you know where the, the paint is. If you have to come back and, um, you know, poke a hole in some, don't be afraid to. If you got too carried away and you need to come back, and just take your, your um, background color and poke a hole in it like that. That's certainly okay, too. That's a good way to get this to happen. And I think I have a little peach under this, too which I will we'll put in a minute, but that's kind of good. Right now we've got, this is what we've got. So we'll, we'll leave that dry so we don't have to spend enough more time drying. Let's start with some flowers. All right, so we're going to start with some Dazneen purple and a little white. I'm going to make this sort of medium color here. And I'm going to come up here like this and tap it on. Leave some of the green showing, okay, under this, under green. Just leave a little bit, right? Now come right into your white paint. And on the top part, if this was a clock, it would be between 9 o'clock and 12. Some of these should touch. They should touch. They should be connected like they're all friends. Okay? I, I, I see a lot of people, and they just put little spots. Okay? Don't do that. Okay? I mean, I'm, seeing, I'm getting some of this back, so don't, you know, let's put a little magenta with that, too. Just a little tiny bit of magenta into the white. That's Okay, like that. There we go. Using a little tiny brush here like that. Warm this up. It's, it's going to be lighter on the top. Okay, and you're going to suggest that these flowers are here. A little clump of flowers. Nothing too, nothing too scary. Just something like that. Okay? You see what I've done? Nothing too scary. Now, I'm into that magenta color, so I'm just going to come right up here with the magenta, and I'm going to come up here on the top of my roof. Now, think about gravity, all right? So these um, these flowers, I'm using a little 3 8 inch angle brush. These flowers are coming over, and then they go down. Think of gravity. Okay, don't just stick them out like points. I've seen some of that, too. You're going to go right in front of our um, um, underneath our palm trees, right in front of like that. Just kind of Those are in the background, so we're just saying that these are in front like that. Okay, and then maybe I've got something coming up here like this. Sometimes there's some little shoots that are coming, they're kind of sticking up. And then right down over the top of this palm tree, magenta, tiny bit of white, but not much. Okay, and we're just going to come down here like this next to the house. And then over here like this, like it's coming out. Did you know that bougainvillea are um, poisonous? Yeah, so you would have can't eat those. They're poisonous. But they're really pretty, and they grow in these tropical places. They'll grow in Houston, but they don't freeze well. So you could have some for a while, and then they could freeze, and then it's all gone. 
California, Hawaii, they all have them. They can be they're beautiful, and they come in different colors. California, you'll see them widening up trees. So anyway, that's um. I might just put a couple dots in here like that. I think I had some back here. I don't know if I want those. I don't know. I kind of like it though that they might be just. Well, no, because that says that the palm tree is in front of those, so I can't have that. Let me just erase that. Nope, can't have that. Sorry. Sorry, can't have a can't have the bougainvillea showing up there because this palm tree. We've said this palm tree is in front. Okay, so, all right. Well, we tried. Okay, now, what are we going to do? A little bit of white paint. Now, remember the flower. It's the lights on top. The lights coming from the top. This isn't a star map. The lights coming from the top. So your lighter colors. You did the darker colors underneath, and you can say that there's a section of these that's coming down all by themselves. So the light's going to be on the outside edge like that. Okay. Same thing here. Light's going to be on the outside edge. Go right into the white because this is wet. And just to touch a little bit. The more you touch, it'll disappear. Okay, something like that. So there's our, let's zoom back out. So there's our um, bougainvilleas, and I think that's very nice. Here's some little darker ones. Maybe we'll just make this a little bigger now that I've zoomed back out and looked at it. Coming in here like this. Over that plant. Alright, so that's what I've got planted there. That's pretty. Now I think I've got some purple flowers over here with a little bit of ultramarine blue. It's kind of a different color purple. A little bit of ultramarine blue and purple, and I'm going to come in here like this with that a little bit of white on the brush. Not too much. I'm going to tap in some clusters of these. Remember, they're all touching. They're, they're a little more blue than those back there. I'm kind of put them around here like this. Let me kind of make the corner here. Now again, a little bit of white. These are in the shade, so there's not going to be too much of these, but you can dap a little bit of white on some of them like that. Something. Okay, like that. Nothing too nothing too crazy. Okay, a little more purple with that. A little bit more purple and blue one. A little bit darker in a couple places. Okay. Alright, so those those are those. Okay. I mean we're just moving right along with the flowers, aren't we? Now, what else? Um well as long as we're into the now clean the brush. Here's some yellow paint and a little bit of white. Okay, like that, a little bit of yellow and white. I'm going to come up here to my lantern, painting over the white, right, like that. So there's, and as long as I'm doing that, let's just take some yellow flowers, and we're going to say that we've got some, let's take some green, a little bit of yellow and some phthalo blue, and let's make a light green, some light green plants right here and here, like this, kind of next to our, um, um, palm tree like that. There's some light green right in here like that. Now I'll take a little bit of the yellow and white and suggest just a couple little dots of yellow flowers coming up here like that. Okay, something like that. Nothing too crazy because yellow and purple are complements so that looks pretty good, right? Alright, so those are those flowers. Zoom back in. Okay. I'll let you just kind of look where we are now. I'm, good. I'm getting it. I'm re actually refining this more the second time around. Anytime you do something twice, probably the chances are the second one you're gonna, you know, get some, you know, some d different thoughts about maybe do it a little bit differently. Okay. Now let's see. In here, I want some orange ones, so I'm gonna take some white paint, and I'm gonna just paint some white flowers in here like this. Just say, growing along here, there's some white flowers. Now, I'm going to eventually make them orange and yellow, but I, yellow only paints over white. So, I'm going to, where you can easily say it, see it. So, if I'm saying that there's some, you know, these flowers growing around here, I'm going to do them white first. Okay, and of course, you could make them any color you wanted to. It's just, this is your garden. Now, while that's drying, I'm going to take some yellow and, and cad red medium and make an orange, a little brighter orange, but again, we're not going to put white with it. Just yellow and cad red medium, and I'm going to come up along here and next to my um, uh, 
walkway. And remember, do you see how these flowers are all connecting? They're all kind of touching at some point. Please try to, you can have a little lone one out here occasionally, but try to avoid spots, okay? These are clusters of flowers. I see, I'm just I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain this enough where everybody's gonna go back. Oh, I get it now. Okay, a little bit of clusters of flowers. And now let's take a little cad red medium. Come back here and brighten up a couple of these. Okay, there we go. So like, there's some, there's some flowers there. Now on this side, we've got some red ones. So uh, I don't think I did that before, but we're gonna have to put out some actual red, which is a napple crimson. And uh, so I'm going to put some of that color out here, like the, that, no, okay, some red. We want some pure red. And I'm going to rinse my brush. Now this is kind of important, you guys. Make a habit of rinsing your brush. And uh, now, let's see, I want to just take some red flowers here. My green is dry. I'm going to tap in some red, like this. I'm just going to say I've got some red flowers growing like this. Okay, maybe down over here like that. Yeah, let's get some white with that. Make a pink. A little bit of white on your brush. Now, light's coming kind of from this direction. So, so if you get some white going right up here on the flowers like that while they're still wet, probably from 3 o'clock to... Um, 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock, maybe even clear down to 6 o'clock with the white, you're going to turn some, you're going to create some real pretty little pink flowers. And then up in here, up top, I want more pink ones. Just to say that there's this little group of pink ones up here like that. All right. Now we're going to have to dry this in a minute, but I think this is pretty good here. We've got these little flowers blooming here. Okay. Nice little group of flowers. Now, is this been dry? This is probably dry here now. So I can take a clean brush and I want a little bit of wash of um, kind of a peach color. So I'm going to take yellow and cad red medium and make this some. Um, oh no, that's not going to work. Let's take a little bit of red with that. A little bit of white. Okay, so I want a little peach color and I'm going to take a little water on my brush. And I'm just going to come under here, like, let's see, a little peacher, a little more peach. Let's try, you know what, maybe we'll try a little magenta with that. There we go, I want a little peachy color here, but very thin glaze, see, coming up on the side of it. Now I'm just putting water with this. Now let's just, more water, I don't want this too bright. This kind of suggests it down here that this is, um, it's a little warmer here like that, maybe back under here like this on our sand. There, just... There we go, just something, a little bit of a... There we go, a little bit of a shadow back under here too, like that. So again, we've got, we still have the light here, but um, maybe just something down in here to kind of close this off. Okay, now as long as I'm into this little brush, let's take a little bit of yellow oxide and white. And I'm going to just lighten up my rails again, if they're not showing up. Is that light enough? No. Let's take a little more white. Maybe that kind of beige color we had for the ground would be good. Can I pinch the brush? There we go. I just wanted this rails a little bit lighter right up here like this on our steps. And let's take the front of the step here like that now. There we go. See? It's cute, right? And I want to say that this has got to be, let's see, let's just um, take some cadred medium and yellow and then um, a little bit of burnt sienna, but not much. Maybe a little bit of white. I want a little kind of a rust brown color. Okay. I want this to be. I want this to be an obvious landing up here. So I'm going to just put this color up on top. 
underneath the door here like that so that you know that you've got you've landed on the top of the step okay this is the you know this is the top of the step right here like that okay we'll make this a little darker right there you can see the inside of that and let's just do a little bit of dark right on that side too there you go now you've got you now you've got a step going here oh perfect so what else could we do well this is probably dry by now so let's take a little bit of of yellow and let's see get all the purple off the brush if you're going to be playing remember yellow is the opposite of purple on the color wheel so if you're fooling around with purple and you go into yellow guess what you're just going to have a kind of an ugly gray color so a little bit of yellow a little bit of cad red medium let's see there we go i want to say that i've got well first off i want some yellow flowers first off i'm going to put a little bit of yellow here first let's see that's too orange rinse 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 now if if, if you've been playing madly with flowers and you need to you, what you want may want to do is just put out some clean yellow and lighten your flat you know i mean you know cover cover the flower with you know yellow first right okay see, see i'm doing that kind of cover the flower with yellow where's my yellow okay like that just a little bit of yellow first on these flowers i want them to look green now i'm going to come back with the orange on top of that there you go here now right on top of that i'm going to do an orange top of these flowers like this so that the yellows underneath and they're a bit brighter okay let's make a nice bright orange color here there we go all right so I've got these pretty orange flowers here and let's take a little bit of cad red medium make it a little bit darker maybe on the outside edges of these to kind of close it in all right there we go so those are our orange flowers that's pretty and then we got to dry it and then add a bit of light green and we're done how's that right i think that's kind of cool don't you so let's dry it and then we'll we'll finish it up okay so here's our picture we need this green bush in front of these so let's make a green let's take some yellow white and yellow and yellow ox you know cut um phthalo blue okay that's pretty good i want to kind of a, to put a little tiny bit of cad red medium in it to just gray it and now we're going to come this way so i'm going to wet the brush so that it's pinch it because i'm using a smaller angle now i'm just going to come out this way and suggest that over the tops of these blue ones which we just dried We've got some other flowers coming this way. Let's let's darken this up just in here in a couple places. Okay, we're saying that there's some um, lots of nice bright lots a little bit brighter here like this over these flowers here like that. Now yeah, I want some little bright let's see where's my yellow? yellow light Where's, oh, that'll work yeah, here it is that's cad yellow light we want cad yellow medium okay now let's come over here like this make some brighter greens take a touch of the cad red to it turn it tone it down so it's not too bright and let's just come up in here like this and suggest our reds dry if the red wasn't dry this wouldn't work okay so we're saying that that's that's dry let's see we want a little bit of that color over here for sure we want some of these lighter colors over here let's let's uh, darken this up just a bit if we got too many of the the orange flowers it's easy enough to come by and darken it up or maybe put a light leaf somewhere like that bring that off darken this one up see you can just come back and you can make them a little smaller if you need to all right and we'll say that let's bring that out some leaves out like this down here to the bottom 
and let's bring a little leaves in the front of this like that and uh, I think I want a green leaf going up like this this way okay there we go just not talk about that one too much but just some sort of dark green leaf going up that way under this palm tree all right and let's see a little bit of dark purple under the door kind of make the top of this um, uh, you know our stoop make that darker all right now we don't have our lantern finished so let's finish that take a little pointy brush this is really simple we're going to take white I want to say something too you know we really appreciate the fact that you guys you know follow our uh, channel and and uh, subscribe and if we, we were dosing statistics you know YouTube gives you all these crazy statistics but you know that half the people that watch our videos don't subscribe if you like us please just take a minute and subscribe it will make such a difference to how we are seen on YouTube by other channels. If you're subscribing, that really helps us. We don't send you emails. Nothing terrible happens to you. You can, if you like three or four artists, subscribe to all of them. That's not a big deal. But if you like a channel, okay, whether you're artists or what we are, take a moment and subscribe. You help that channel out tremendously. We get better ads. If we have more subscribers, we can, you know, we can, we attract a better class of ads. We're seeing more. We're shown more in the, in the, um, uh, search engines so please take a moment and subscribe if you can we'd really appreciate that and I've got that a little bit dark so I'll put a little bit of yellow on here like this there we go there's our little lantern now you see where I've got my tiny brush now I can take some yellow and just drop in it a little bit just just a couple little little flowers here don't have to do much just a couple right there the little brush nothing too much and um, just I'm going to dry this and then finish up our our final touches. Okay, so we've dried this a little bit. What I want to do is indicate that there's some light coming from here. Now the problem with the screen door, if you like it, you could leave it like that. The problem with this is that John made a good point when he looked at this. He said it's not really duplicatable. All right. So... You know, that, of course, is not a good thing. If you can't duplicate it, that doesn't help us. So, what we're going to do is I'm just going to take some Dazneen Purple and color it back in. But you could leave it if you like it. You could actually leave it if you like it. But I'm going to color it back in because he made a good point. You can't really... Um, I'm just going to go ahead and take some purple and color it back in and repaint this. You know, sorry. I mean, I, I liked it a lot. But, and, I, you know, you could have done something like that. But... Just for the sake of argument, you know, we'll do it like this. Now take a little bit of white paint, come down here like this, and pull our little cross pieces on the door. We almost have to dry the door now. Hang on. Okay, so we're going to dry the door. All right, and then they're taking a little bit of just the angle brush and come straight down here like that with a little bit of kind of an off-white color. Tiny, tiny little cross pieces like this. The front one should be the main one. Don't, there you go, like that. There you go. All right, now we'll dry that, and then we'll go ahead and put the light from the, we'll go ahead and put the light from the window. But let me just take a little bit of white and yellow and I want to put a little bit of light right on the top of this railing. The reason being is that our, our light lanterns here, and I want to suggest that we've got, uh, let's put a little bit of light right here on this post, light yellow on the post. I'm going to light, still need to lighten up these. I'm not, I'm not happy with those. And maybe a little bit here on the floor like that where the light might be hitting it. See? Because we're going to say that some, there's some light coming this way, barely touching it. I'm going to take all the paint off the brush, just pulling this across here like that. And make sure this is dry, because if you don't, 
and you don't like it, you won't be able to save it. But that's what's pretty for me. You could have either had something, you know, the light in the windows or whatever, but there, there he goes, just across there like that. We're suggesting that there might be a little light maybe on this step too. Just, you know, play with the light a little bit. Sometimes that can be fun in a painting. And uh, again, we would appreciate it if you would subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate that a lot. I might take a few little lights. We just got a little yellow going here. Just a few little bits of yellow coming down into our tree like that. Is there anywhere else I want to put a little bit of light green? Um, just a couple places up here in the Boogan Beauty, but not too much, I don't think. I think you can you can overwork something like this. Keep it simple. The the that, that's the the main trick here is to keep it nice and simple. And um, see a little bit of cad red medium, a little bit of burnt umber. Let's we'll see a little bit of purple and cad red medium can be very effective. It's almost a you know kind of a rust brown color too. Purple and cad red cad red medium. I'm gonna make this a little darker next to my door here like that. Make sure it's dark under the eaves. There we go. And could we put any kind of lighter, uh, just some sort of light here on our bamboo or our palm tree, whatever this is, a banana tree or whatever. Here. All right. I think we're going to just stop because you could, again, this is the kind of painting where it's really easy to overwork it. All right. And you'll see one more thing, and one more thing, and one more thing, and you'll think, well, I should do this. And then suddenly you find yourself not liking it as much. And so I'm just really going to encourage you to just kind of take a moment and stop. You know, make sure that you've got some shadows kind of going flat this way, and some greenery. Stop here, stop here. There we go. I think we're in good shape. And this is, uh, let me just move everything out of the way. That there, and I'm going to just move all this out of the way. Though that's pretty, isn't it? All the colors on our palette. And I'm just going to move this here like that, and let you see it all by itself without, without any more visual noise. I would say this was a very good place to stop and um, just sign it. Okay? So keep in mind that we've got lots of good videos coming up while we're out on vacation. We'll be doing the live things back toward the um, you know, the end of May, we'll start again with the live things, but look, look for more of our regular video, weekly releases. And you can, and you can, those of you who are our members, remember, John and I get emails the whole time we're on vacation, so we will be answering art critiques and questions, and we'll be putting, where possible, when we run into internet, we'll be putting up, um, uh, little posts of, of where we are and try to keep everybody slightly entertained. I think it should be a lot of fun. I think you're going to really enjoy it. And um, uh, we'll, we'll see you in the next video. And thanks for watching, you guys. I'm going to zoom in. One of the things that kind of annoys me when I see videos where someone's showing a painting is they don't stop and just let you just have the painting for a minute. So we're not ending the video at this second right here. We're just going to let you see it. Um, if I had a second, I would take a minute and just sign it which I might do right here. I need a dark place to sign it. Let's see, a little pen here, and I might just sign it right here. Okay, there, I've signed it, and I'll put my red slash through it. Do that really quick. That's a tiny signature, so I'm gonna need a tiny little red slash that there it's signed here's a tip by the way we just I, you know I know you guys always think what we're done we're done and if you're gonna sign a painting you later intend to frame okay this is really important make about a finger's width go above about a finger I almost got too low with that because a frame might cut off the signature um, pay attention to how where you sign things and if you're gonna date something please do it on the back and don't do it on the front all right, this was fun. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Ginger and, uh, and John and Sammy and I wishing you a fabulous day.